All right, so uh, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, welcome to my uh, talk. My name is uh, Matteo Barbello and I'm one of the author of uh, Battery Lab, a collaborative platform for uh, power monitoring. This is a joint work with a lot of great authors, uh, Minus, Mihai, Ahmed, uh, Fabian, and Ben. Let's start with some motivation behind this work. So power consumption is a growing concern for mobile devices. We're all familiar with uh, the problem of running out of battery, being you know, strained in an airport trying to find a plug to recharge our phone. So mobile application vendors are very well aware of these issues and most importantly, the fact that the operating system might recommend to turn off their app in case it's consuming too much power. So accurate power profiling is very important, but it is, it, it is at the same time also a complex and expensive task. And that's because in order to perform accurate power profiling, you need to directly connect the power meter to a mobile device. This requires opening up the device, find the battery and connecting directly to it. And on modern devices, it can become quite hard. So there is a risk of damaging the device as we uh, very well discover while building the system. There is also no standardized solution and no cloud offering. While today it's very simple to go, for example, on AWS device farm and get a bunch of devices so that you can test your application on many different, for example, variation of Android, the same thing is not possible when you want to have a device connected to a power meter. So researchers and developers have been building in-house testbed. So those are, very simply put, maybe a couple of Android devices connected to a power meter. And then some custom software they've wrote in order to be able to uh, collect power measurement from these devices. So those solutions are quite cumbersome and very hard to share, even within the same organization. So what's the solution to this problem? Our vision is a Planet Lab-like testbed for power measurements. So for who is not familiar with Planet Lab, Planet Lab used to be a very cool testbed where researchers would interconnect resources from their organization so they could run experiments from all over the world. So we kind of want to achieve the same thing for power measurements where researcher or organization in general, they can share their local nodes so a bunch of mobile devices connected to a power meter. So then now we can run experiments for power from around the world, some sort of cloud offering, but build between researchers. How can we achieve that? We need to be able to have shareable power monitoring nodes, and we, have to, we need to have very complex device automation, remote, we call it remote device automation. We need to be able to have access, visual access to the device, and be able to write script that works both for Android and iOS. Let's start with some terminology to better understand how the system works. So we have an access server, which is where an experimenter, this guy here, would go and, for example, define an experiment. For example, I want to monitor the power consumption on a browser running on an Android devices in Africa. Then we have a vantage point. For example, here we have a vantage point in Africa. This could be a simply, uh, this can be a research organization hosting one or more mobile devices connected to a power meter participating to battery lab. And then we have tester. Tester are different from experimenter. Tester are humans that I can recruit, for example, on Mechanical Turk, asking them, for example, to interact with this very specific device uh, in Africa and perform a task. Of course, we don't always need a tester. We can also have automation, as I said before, we can simply run scripts. So the first component of Battery Lab is the access server. So the goal of the access server is twofold. First of all, it manages the vantage point, so it verifies the reachability, which we achieve over SSH, and performs software updates. The second and most important thing is that it schedules experiments. As I said before, an experimenter can define a job, submit the job to the access server, and the access, access server will dispatch these queued jobs based on experimenter constraints. For example, I want to have a node uh, in Africa or I want a very specific device uh, independently of where it's located in the world uh, and other constraints like system constraints. For example, how many other jobs are running in the system at this point. It's currently implemented using Jenkins over AWS. So the second component of Battery Lab is the vantage point. This is a visualization in theory of a vantage point. So what we have here is a power monitor which is connected to a couple of uh, uh, test devices using a circuit switch. This is something we have built so that we can reuse one power monitor with multiple mobile devices. Then we have a Raspberry Pi, and the goal of the Raspberry Pi is to control the node. For example, this is connected to the access server to receive jobs that might need to be run, and it can decide to switch between a specific device or whether the device should be powered by USB or the power monitor. 
This is the reality, though, of a battery lab node. As you can see, it's a bit less professional than the image that we saw before, but at the same time, all the components are there. We have our power monitor, which is connected to a Raspberry Pi. As I said before, this is responsible of controlling a vantage point. We have our circuit switch, a bit of hard to see here in the figure, and then we have our testing device. There are two main ways to interact with the battery lab nodes. The first one is by performing actual tests, so having a tester interact with the device uh, and testing, for example, an application. Uh, this is what we're describing here. Um, for doing so, we're using, uh, we achieve visual access to the device using the VNC protocol, and specifically, specifically we're using NoVNC, which is a JavaScript client. This means that any tester can simply access a device, uh, any device from the browser. And for device mirroring, we're using SCRCPY on Android and AirPi Play on the iOS. This is also important not only for tester, but also for experimenter who might want to verify that their automation works. So they can write a script um, for uh, Android, for example. They can ship it to a battery lab and they can verify things are working correctly. The second way of interacting with the battery lab node is by using script, so what we call automation. Uh, in order to make things easier, we have developed a tool we call Cappuccino, which allows very simply to record user interaction and generate script. So under the cover, we're using NoVNC for collecting human input, and then we're using ADB from Android for performing the actual automation. So we're translating uh, human clicks and uh, other input like uh, scroll or even text into ADB, Android Debug and Bridge command. And for iOS, we do something similar, but using our library, which is playing a nice trick by basically emulating virtual mouse and keyboard actions and then sending those over Bluetooth. And this is because iOS doesn't have uh, a native support for third-party automations. Okay, so now let's uh, dig in into a demo of Battery Lab. This is our website. We support a bunch of applications. The one I'm showcasing here is a website power meter. We can select the node, the browser, which URL we want to load, in this case, cnn.com. Um, we want to run a simple loading test. We want visual access to the device. And we also want to turn on the power meter because uh, we want to have actual uh, uh, current numbers. So what happened next? The job that we have defined gets scheduled at the access server. The access server will talk with a specific vantage point. We we'll make sure that we have a slot available and then instrument the nodes that, for example, we want visual access. So we need to start streaming uh, the, the screen. And here we go. We can actually now see the uh, screen uh, of the device right here. Um, and then what we want to run next is uh, uh, we want to run the Brave browser. And this is CNN.com. So we start by cleaning the device or so just uh, killing any potential pending application. Then we launch Brave. Um, we visit CNN.com. And because we ask for a simple load, I believe we're waiting for 25 seconds. Uh, we could, for example, ask for something different. This is up to the experimenter. For example, we want to interact with the page, uh, load some internal pages. Maybe we want to scroll. Whatever action want to be performed, it will be up to the experimenter to code that uh, or use the usability testing and have a real test or interact with the device. So once the experiment is over, we do just a little bit of cleanup of the device. We collect all the results back uh, at the access server and then we make them available to the user. Uh, you're gonna see them here uh, in this page, for example, Right now we have some analytics on screen. We can see the CPU over time, the current over time, um, bandwidth consumed and, and stuff like that. So of course we have more data. We have like full log cat from Android, uh, but this is what we decide to show. And then if we go back, we can see our experiment, the list of experiment that everybody else has run. So we can actually have access to uh, other people experiment and have a summary of what, uh, uh, what we just saw before. Uh, and of course, we can also download raw data from this, uh, uh, from this page. Uh, so here's how Battery Lab works. Hope you will give it a try and you also decide to join. So we have reached the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, you can you know, ask them right now, leave them in Slack or even send them by email. Thank you so much.